In this video, uh, we're going to start talking about sinusoidal sources, how do we represent them in time domain, um, and also talk about what it means when we talk about steady state response. So a given circuit, you have to have sources in there. Typically, sources could be DC or could be um, uh, signals that change with time. One of the most common um, functions we use to represent um, sources that change with time is um, um, cosine. Uh, of course, it could be sine, but for, uh, for historical reason, um, uh, we use cosine. So, for example, V of T could be represented as V maximum times cosine of omega T. Uh, and, of course, uh, to be, to be a, the very complete, we need to also indicate if there is any kind of a phase shift. All right. So could we represent it in sign? Absolutely, because as a sidebar, we know that uh, cosine of x is equal to sine of x minus 90 degrees. So if we shift this thing by 90 degree, we're going to go from cosine to sine. It's a good thing to remember, but all of our work is going to be pretty much built on this. Of course, you can also have an equation for i, i of t. It can be represented the same way, cosine omega t plus some theta. If you're going to this is going to be theta v, that's going to be theta i. So, so what we have here um, is that omega is referred to as angular frequency. The units are radian per second, and it's really equal to 2 pi f, where f is frequency, and the unit is hertz. And then, or sometimes we also are able to write, not sometimes, all the time, we can write it as 2 pi over t, where t is the period of the signal, and um, um, the unit for the period, of course, would be uh, a second. Okay, so these are different ways we can represent a sinusoidal source, and that's going to be the focus of what we're going to do in this, um, the, in the next couple, three um videos we're going to do focusing on sinusoidal steady state response now let's just let's just make sure that uh, we we are kind of have a good idea what that means um, if you've got uh, let's say you've got a general signal rather than writing the same thing twice uh, we'll let's let's just use a general form it could be i or v but let's just call it x of t is equal to x of m cosine omega t plus theta v. So we need to make sure we are able to both draw a signal that somebody gives to us as well as if somebody draws it, we are able to back out of there and um, um, write the equation for it. So let's say for example one, example one, someone writes us and say, hey, what can you plot, can you draw um, the time domain, something that look like this. And um, sure, well, we know this is going to be maximum, x max, that's this going to be a sinusoidal signal. The maximum is going to be there. We know this is a plus pi over 2, the theta, this is the theta, or the phase shift, and the phase shift is plus, therefore it means it's going to be shifted to the left. So, um, and, then, and then this will tell us what the omega is, but if I want to draw it, I'm going to need to find t, which omega is equal to 2 pi over t, which means if 200 pi is equal to 2 pi over t. Uh, that means that my period, t, is equal to one, 1 over 100 second. So that's good. Now, this, I, that's good that I know this is pi over that, but I really need to know how much in time it is shifted. The way we think of this is that 
the amount of shift of t over period is the same as theta over 2 pi because in one period uh, it'll go one time around around the uh, circle unit circle so so we can say whatever the phase shift the ratio of phase shift to that is equivalent to the shift in time with respect to the period okay so if you do that uh, delta t is going to be equal to pi over 4 replacing theta with that 2 pi and then the t from bottom goes up there so we got a t over here which happens to be 1 over 100 so this and this cancel out and delta t is going to be delta is going to be basically 1 eighth times 1 over 100 which is t so that's how long it's about an eighth of a period ahead so if you're going to go ahead and draw this let's go ahead and say let's let's um, if if this is zero and this is let's say seconds and this is whatever the unit for x is x unit whatever if it's a voltage it's going to be voltage if not so we know that the maximum is five minimum is minus five so if if our cosine had no shift if it was shift of zero we know it would max out here That would be our signal. But since we know that our signal has a shift of um, uh, eight of a eight of a uh, period, uh, uh, it would be it, its maximum would be somewhere in this area. Okay, so it's going to max out here, and then what it's going to do? It's going to kind of basically you're going to lead this okay so this is going to be our signal that's x of t and it will max out here it will mean out here and all of those would be what one eighth of a period or the one eight hundredth of a second earlier so now we're able to draw this signal Oh, by the way, we also know that one period, which is from here to here, this is one period. We know that one period is equal to one and one hundredth of a second, just to be sure. It's our period. We know that the maximum happened at, it's supposed to happen at zero, but it will happen in one over one eight hundredth of a second. So now we have fully drawn uh, the circuit. Now let's say if we can go the other way. Let's say um, they asked us to um, uh, given a um, signal um, that let's say look like um, this. And let's say this time they were asking us to do V of T. This is T. And let's say this is happening at. Um, um, Point one, point one millisecond. Okay, so now the question is, um, can you write the equation for this? Yes, of course, because now I have to find out what the V maximum is. V maximum is 20 volt. That was easy because it's the maximum and I'm assuming the minimum is going to be minus 20. Now I noticed that the maximum for this happened a quarter uh, later but let's not worry about that. So I know that the period for this is one over 1000 a second. And also I know that omega, I need omega for me to write the signal, write the equation is two pi over T, which means this is gonna be 2000 pi. Okay, what else do I need? I need, so if I wanna write this equation, this equation is gonna be the form V of T is gonna be Vm cosine omega t plus theta so i have to have all of this so far i've got omega i've got v of m now i gotta find out theta i don't know i kind of know theta i kind of don't know theta i know theta is i know i know delta t the shift the actual the cosine would have maxed out here 
but this is maxing out 90 degrees later. So I know it's a th the delta th theta, and I know this is negative because it's later shifting to the right. Anytime you shift to the right, it's a negative number. So, so what's going to happen here is this quarter of that, so I've got 0 0.025 is my delta t. It's actually minus that. And then um, that over t, which is um, 1 over 1,000. Uh, actually, I didn't quite get this right. It's 0 0.1 um, millisecond. So I better go back and correct these. The mil 0 0.1 milliseconds, 1 over 10,000, which make this one 20,000. And so let's go back and correct this. And this is actually going to be 0 0.025 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, so now that we got that figured out, the delta t over t is the same as theta divided by 2 pi. So from here I can find theta, and theta hopefully would be pi over 2 minus. Okay, so now I have theta, I have omega, and I have vm. I can go back up here and write the equation as vt is equal to 20 cosine of 2000 pi, I'm sorry, this is 20,000 pi t minus pi over 2. So what did we do in this signal, in this video? We basically started by defining that the sources in the sinusoidal um, circuit will be sine or cosine. We, we always use cosine because we know sine is just a variation of cosine with the minus 90 degrees of minus pi over 2. Then we talked about the components, the three components we need to have in order to understand the signal, maximum, omega, and theta. So phase shift, radial frequency, and the maximum gets us that. And then, and then uh, when we get a little further down, we can, we talked about how if somebody gives us an equation, we can write that, uh, we can draw that signal as in a time domain. Uh, and then if somebody draws it in time, uh, time domain, we are able to also give out the equation equivalent to it. Now, what's this steady state business? <clears throat> so uh, typically in the life of a circuit, life of <clears throat> a circuit operation, phases of a circuit operation, if you want to think about it that way, you have a device, you turn it on, and at some point you turn off, turn it off. And then there is a period of transition, and then it stabilizes, and then there is a period of transfer transition after you do. This section, when it's operating normally, is referred to as steady state. Okay, if you remember from the earlier work we did, this period is called the step response. And some of this, this, this point will have some transient activity that happened transient, meaning it's going to go away after a while. And when you turn the device off, it's going to have a certain time before it kind of decays and goes and quiets down and shuts off. And this period is, as you, if you may remember, we refer to it as natural response. In this discussion, when, when somebody's talking about sinusoidal steady state, our interest is in this region. We have really no interest in either side of that. That brings us to the end of this particular def, uh, video, which is meant to define some basics of what a sinusoidal source is, uh, and then also talk about what it means when we say steady state response. We will come back in later videos and get in much more detail and offer some analysis tools to help us analyze circuits that have sinusoidal sources and we are interested in their output, steady state output, current voltage, and different parts of the circuits.